you look like you've just slaughtered something. Yes. This is, you must try this. Good morning, folks. Hope you are well. Welcome uh, to my kitchen. Today we are doing another Barry Tries, the playlist in which I try uh, well-known recipes from vlogs, TV shows, chefs, all that stuff. And today is one from uh, the Great British Bake Off, which I think they have in lots of different countries now. I don't know if they call it the Great French Bake Off. I think they show the English one in other countries, but they rename it something. I caught one the other night and they actually had this thing called rainbow bagels, which looked amazing at the corner of my eye. I'm like, I really, really want to try that. And I had a couple of tweets uh, suggesting that. So I figured, hey, let's give this a little bit of a whirl, a little bit of a whiz. I'm feeling a little bit delicate because I had quite a few cocktails last night. I know. Here's another photo, actually. I had a Bloody Mary cocktail and I do not like them. I told my friends I don't like them. They're like, you've got to try it, you'll like it. Put it in a bowl because I said, look, it's more like soup, like gazpacho. The, the waitress brought us some bread. Still didn't like it. Uh, it's basically Dolmio sauce, isn't it? Anyhow, uh, these will take a little bit of time, but making bagels, if you've never done it before, is actually really, really fun. You puff them up with bicarb soda later on, so it's gonna be brill. Let's get on, let's go. All right, the wedding ring is removed. We have a big mothership main bowl going on. Uh, right here, first up, uh, is some strong bread flour. This is just one sachet of fast action yeast. It's like the dry quick stuff uh, you get in most supermarkets. They call it loads of different phrases. Uh, so I've been told by this recipe and actually by you guys many times, you can put this in together with salt as well at the same time, but you must put it in a separate thing because if they go together, it kills the yeast. If we put it in the opposite section of the bowl, you see that? So I'm not sure which one's the sugar and the salt because they both look the same. <laughs> I think this is the sugar, there's slightly more sugar but the salt is clearly apart uh, from the yeast there, okay? So what I've got here uh, to get the yeast going is some lukewarm water, and I'm just gonna pour it into the bowl. And this is from a guy called Paul Hollywood. If you don't know who he is, he's kind of like a silver fox of baking in the UK, and he's telling you to do this. So if that works, I ain't got no problem with that. So we're just gonna work this through, just so it all starts to bond together a little bit. And it might not look like it, but in a couple of hours, this will be a rainbow. There we go, look at that. A nice, rough dough ball. Don't worry if it doesn't look very pretty right now. It will be a rainbow one day. You will. You'll grow into a delicious, edible rainbow. So we're just gonna get some more of the strong flour, and where we said before, it's like a little bit rough. Ah. Uh, we're gonna dump it down. Come on, there you go, on there. And by kneading it, we'll put some warmth through it as well. We'll get that yeast working, starting to go anyway. And we'll hopefully go from that rough, crumbly surface to a smooth, I'm not gonna say that. Very smooth surface, delicious, spankable. <laughs> it's got flour everywhere. Now this is where I got it wrong actually. I thought we would do the first prove with the dough like this, but in fact, in a minute, once we've got it nice and smooth, we're gonna divide it up and dye them individually. I'm gonna give it the full proper 10 minutes, but like slamming it down, getting into it, getting the flour all over my face, loving it. Just loving it. Whoa. Alrighty, I'm really happy with that, but we do now need to weigh this and divide it into the five colors of the rainbow. So we're gonna divide that up into, what's that, like 120 grams per portion. Let's do it. I've been doing this for like 10 minutes now. I feel like I'm in the maternity ward of a hospital weighing new babies. Like, they've now got them perfect. Perhaps maybe, maybe a little bit overkill, actually. Uh, you probably don't need to be that specific. <laughs> but that is five lumps of potentially 124 grams dough. Nice. So for the time being, I've got a damp tea towel and apparently we leave that over the top and let it start to prove as you would and we'll take them out one by one and change them into the colors of the rainbow, which um, I've got the uh, food dyes here. These are concentrated pots, the little paste ones, and you just put like a little toothpick in there and stir it around. The colors are amazing with these. I also find food gel is quite temperamental. The only problem is, despite this having an orange one on the box, doesn't have orange. I've got all the other colors of the rainbow in there, but then I saw a rainbow color kit as well, which has all the colors I want, but these are gels, which I think are a bit more temperamental. So we'll paste the four, and when it comes to the orange, we'll just gamble on the gel, which should, should work. So we'll just see if this is enough. I'm gonna have to get my hands in. Du -du -du, and we're gonna work it through, okay? We're gonna knead it so that dye is pushing all the way through the dough, not just on that top surface. Amazing. <laughs> like a smurf. This is gonna take a long time. So let me jump, hopefully in a minute, to a consistently colored, non-tie-dyed dough ball. Uh, update, I've had to recruit the wife. How are you getting on, Mrs. B? Have you got incredible Hulk hands? Yes. 
what I'm finding is the intense concentrate ones are great for that colour, but it doesn't spread. So the, the gels do actually work much better, but I've probably done like five or six drops and just kept working it through. When it stretches, it might have a little colour change, but I'm, to be honest, I'm gonna take that, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's it, look at that. You won't like me when I'm angry. I feel like I'm ruining your day. Don't be silly. I think that looks blooming awesome, don't you? Ratmaster 3000. I don't mean to alarm you. <laughs> I just washed my hands with soap and warm water for five minutes. That's the best I got. What's, is it working? It is working. All right, so we're gonna nail brush to anti-smurf. <laughs> I've had a fake tan accident. You have, haven't you? I have. <laughs> Oompa Loompa. You look like you've just slaughtered something. Yes, <laughs> I've slaughtered that dough. I found a technique that sort of works. So I'll show you on the last color, which is yellow, which we thought would be good to do last because it might make it more human-like. All right, so this is the last piece of dough, and what I'm finding is rather than having it in a bowl, if you make the surface area for the food dye as big as you can, so like squish it around on the bottom of your bowl, and then you get your food dye, and then squeezy, squeezy on, so this is yellow, the last one. Work it into the surface, look at that. That is awesome, right? The delicate sound of Mrs. Barry scrubbing her hands <laughs> frantically in the background. Going to the shoe shop. Uh, sorry, we don't serve on Olympus. Now start to work and bring it together and knead it through. And then when you get like a, a fairly substantial area that's white like that, you then dye again. Do 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 do. And just sort of spread around like that to cover it and coat it. All in all, it takes about, I don't know, 10 minutes per dough ball. So really put the effort in. And actually, that's not the worst colour to end up with on my hands. I'm quite happy with that. No, the orange came off really easily. Did it? I still got bits of green in my hand. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't show this bit on the Bake Off. No, I don't know. Actually, Linton, who helps edit the videos, edits some of the Bake Off stuff. Ah. So um, maybe he can add some maybe. comment to that about... He tells me he has... Although you see the final show is glorious. Like the actual oh my gosh, I bet bit that not. he has to edit, like literally people baking in real time. Like... But it's carnage. Yeah. All right, so that is my last one done. I don't think you're ever fully gonna get it perfect. You can see it's got like little bits of the, the dough there and it stretches, but I really think, personally, that will be enough. So I'm gonna wrap mask that one, stick it in a warm place for an hour, clean my hands, walk my dogs. There you go, this is the warmest part of my house at the moment, right by our boiler. Uh, and you can see the ones that were done first, they've actually gone quite big already. So we'll leave them till they're all nice and doubled in size and I'll see you in a jiffy. We've come back and our dough is looking brilliant. Um, it's risen in size, some what we did a nice sort of rounded smooth edge on it. You can see it's nice and formed like that. Whereas this looks a bit more like a rock cake, but I hope you'll agree it has considerably doubled at least in size from where we were before. So the great thing is while I'm sort of working on the red dough down there, the other ones just to one side are still gonna be sealed by, uh, uh, in the uh, Rat Master cling film stuff to uh, make sure that it still stays warm and might even prove a little bit more. Mightn't you? But what we've got is our chopping board here, and apparently we lightly flour it again and roll it out into a 20 centimeter by 12 centimeter rectangle. Now that's the sort of thing that I know off the top of my head, so we're gonna go accurate. <laughs> Bit of flour again, might as well use that strong flour up. And I'm just gonna roll it out. Oh wow, that's a really nice smooth dough, love that. So this is for reference. All right, that's actually 20 centimeters. So I need to kind of get it rolled out a bit more to fill these gaps and I'm nearly there. I'm um, okay. In fact, it might be easier if I go a bit bigger. That's looking all right. Looks like a big tongue. So mark that there. I feel like I'm talking in my head like I would do when I'm doing DIY anyway. Why has this suddenly become so methodical? And a little uh, shout out to the dads out there. I know not everyone is a natural builder. I, I am not. I wish I did a YouTube channel on uh, DIY stuff sometimes because I used to be rubbish at it and honestly like DIY and that's to the ladies too actually like Mrs B like I said to her like it's only you're only gonna learn if you have a go and I've got a little bit better at stuff like that you know I actually hung a picture straight the other day uh, so that ladies and gents is a perfect 20 centimeter by 12 centimeter rectangle I tell you what folks Da, 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 da. That was getting pretty intense indeed towards the end. I was using scissors to try and make it fine and then I realised if you want 
Uh, once you've got them all stacked like that, if one's overhanging, you can just sort of cut it flush on the edge. Now, apparently, what we want to do is keep the longer edge, the 20 centimeter, and where we've gone 12, uh, every two centimeters, cut them into strips. I have pressed down on it lightly just to try and join it together, which I, it does still feel loose. I don't know what's going to happen here. Um, so we need like six strips. <laughs> Given us the six. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is really cool. And do make sure you go all the way through just to make sure. There we go. There we go. Feels like we're making sweets. Look at that. That's awesome. Can you see? Reminds me of some like rainbow bright roller skates my big sister used to have when we were younger. Do you remember how much your daughters weighed when they were born, Barry? No, but I do remember my big sister had rainbow bright knee protectors with rainbow strips on them. <laughs> now these are going to become bagels. This is out of all of it. This bit now is what I think is going to be the hardest step because I don't quite get it. This is true. Before Mrs. B went to the shops, I showed her. I, I said, I'm going to make this step. I'm going to do it wrong. She's like, no, no. She's like doing Mr. Miyagi, like wax on, wax off and stuff for me. I'm like, no, like, I just don't get it. So I might leave one spare. So if she comes back, um, if I fail the other five, that is, she can have a go. To shape the bagels, lay one of the stacked dough strips on your work surface and place the palm of your hands at each end, all right? Simultaneously, gently move your right hand forwards and your left hand backwards to twist the dough into a rope about 26 centimeters long. So we're gonna to wanna to extend it slightly. It's, it's 20 centimeters. <laughs> I just flipped to a video of my friend. Yeah, his, his wife sent me it and he's like, it will hate it if some people see this and I've literally just showed you guys, that's awesome. So that goes forward. I'm just gonna do it with my fingers, sorry. Like this, okay. Oh, I see, so you go like that to make a ro ah! <gasps> like a spiral like that. Look at that. Wow, <laughs> this is awesome. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. I'm really happy with that. So then you round it Okay, and then just pinch it together, apparently. I'm Hermione Granger. Stupefy. I'm actually having to pinch that quite aggressively. Maybe I should do it with damp fingers, but this is my first one. And then we roll to see. <laughs> Look at that. And I know it looks quite thin at the moment, but that's always been my thing in the past when I've made bagels before, is that like you end up making them ginormous and I, these will puff up with the bicarb. I'm just gonna do that there to hold the shape a little bit. I don't, I mean, it might not make any difference at all, but yeah. Spice pot, something like that would do exactly the same as that. So yeah, I'm gonna do that to the other five. Happy rainbow face. Oh, I just wanna show you like that is my second one. I have nailed that. <laughs> this is, you must try this. Oh my gosh, I have to do more Bake Off recipes like this. I've done four, okay? Uh, and the reason I'm leaving two is not only is that a nice fit for my tray, also if my kids see me doing this, uh, they're gonna be really gutted that they've missed out on a chance to do this. So when they, they're all busy today, so uh, once they get back, they can have a play with that later on. And also it gives me a backup if this fails. Um, so the first one I did, I don't know if I rolled it quite as long as the other ones because it is a little bit fatter, but that spacer has actually helped it hold its shape. Now apparently what we have to do now is leave it for about 20 minutes to prove again in some proving bags. Now I've never heard of a proving bag before, uh, but it turns out the best thing I can think of is another Rapmaster 3000. All right, it's not airtight, so I'm gonna have to go a couple of times. So I'm gonna put that in a nice warm place for about 20 minutes, uh, and meanwhile, I'm gonna get a pot of water onto boil. Mm -hmm. In that goes. Da -da 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 -da. Whoa! These are so delicate and light, and you might think I'm being a little bit over the top here, but I wanna do them one at a time. So I'm just gonna sit it in there. Oh, that is actually puffing slightly but that, I think it's gonna really help that joint there, hold it together. Apparently it's all about helping it hold its shape. All right, so about 30 seconds like that, and then I'm gonna flip it over. Ah, <laughs> amazing! That has had about a minute in total. I'm now putting it onto that wire rack. Oh, -ho -ho! and I think what I'll do, I'll add them slowly, but as it cools like this, I'm just gonna try and shape it slightly back into a circle so when it cools, it might hold that shape slightly more. It's like some sort of bracelet that you buy when you're on holiday in Spain, you're a teenager and you never wear it again. I've got five fairly decent ones now. 
This one looks the most bagel-like right now, but I think when I bake it, it will go congealed together and, well, not congealed, but like it'll have a little hole there and it might even completely become a bread roll. I think that these ones are gonna do better because there's more room for the expansion. So, my oven is preheated to 180C fan, 200 uh, non fan. The pug is ready. Should we get them in? Yes. Did you not? Oh, you nodded. Amazing. They're going in for half an hour in here. Let's see what happens. Oh, I forgot the other ones. <laughs> All right, folks, they are out of the oven. Um, this has really surprised me because the last time I made bagels, they actually expanded in the oven. Uh, but what's actually happened is they've maintained mostly their shape. So they're actually quite long uh, and thin and narrow. In fact, that big giant puff one has turned out the best one, like a proper sized bagel. So I would definitely say, and this is why I love including stuff like this in my videos, because you don't see that on cooking shows. You tend to just see like the epic fails like on the Bake Off, but you don't understand why it happened and how to prevent you guys making it happen. So the main thing is to make it fat because when you do that last bake, that is exactly the shape. After they were dunked in the bicarb, this is exactly the shape it comes out like. So don't expect it to explode. So you guys can absolutely nail this now. And I'm hungry for a bagel. This is the best one. You would normally use a serrated knife. So let me just go through that. <laughs> yeah, look, look at all those guys. That's amazing. It's like dude love the wrestlers t-shirt or just, just generic tie dye, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just gonna put right in the middle of that gap there, like that. Oh! Oh! Chewy, firm, but soft and fair. Amazing! It's got that lovely, wonderful, just baked texture, and just the off putting thing. Uh, oh no, my tongue's alright. You, you feel like you're eating this and you're just basically eating a rainbow, so your, your tongue's gonna be horrendous, but no! So good. It's just got that lovely chewiness to it, which the bicarbonate of soda adds. So I think, looking back with these other ones, which are a little bit smaller, I mean, they're still edible, but you want a bit more thickness on there. I think I might have rolled them just a little bit too tight. So don't do that step so intense. Remember, that was possibly the trickiest step that I'd never done before. Do that, and you'll absolutely nail this. That is delicious. Wow, it's even rainbow inside. It is, it's cool, isn't it? I don't know why I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Me too, it's like that unknown. Like, it took so long dyeing it. And to be fair, with the leftover dough that I did have, perhaps maybe I should have put that into my rectangles as well. But you learn from these things, don't you? And hey, you've got an amazing loaf of bread right there. Mm. Is it good? Mm. You love a bagel, don't you, Chloe? It tastes like bread. Brilliant. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. I haven't done my pizza joke though yet uh, for my uh, crowdfunding campaign for the pizzeria, which is very nearly finishing. Uh, what do you call someone that does not find pizza jokes funny? Laugh-tose intolerant. <laughs>